we've certainly seen um, in Lloyd's in the past couple of weeks a number of syndicates unveiled, and I think we will see more in the coming days and, and months. Um, one of the significant areas of, uh, of change in what we've, what we've seen recently is that these new syndicates are coming in in the form of turnkeys, which means that they're not setting up their own managing agencies per se, but those management opportunities are, are set out by um, existing Lloyd's um, entities. And so they are providing just the capital and some of the um, underwriting expertise, but the, the management of those Lloyd syndicates is being provided by existing entities, which provides a, a much easier flow into the Lloyd's market. And it also gives Lloyd's centrally some reassurance that their procedures and their practices are being followed more appropriately. One of the things that, that Lloyd's has made very clear is that it, it doesn't want to make too many exceptions to this rule. It's made a couple. Um, Chubb, for example, was allowed to set up a managing agency on its own. But I think generally it's set out its stall that it wants its new entrants to come in via the turnkey method. Um, SCORE, as you say, has been a, a, a significant supporter of the Lloyd's market. I think it provides capacity to nine syndicates over the past couple of years. It's um, upping that to 11 for the next, uh, the next couple of years. It clearly sees an advantage in being part of the Lloyd's platform. Its, uh, its executives have, have highlighted the advantages that Lloyd's, that Lloyd's presents. And I think this, is, uh, this underpins um, another more, Im uh, more important message, which is that across the world, professional insurers and reinsurers want to be part of the Lloyd's market. It, it offers them huge opportunities. It offers them both the, uh, the backing of the central fund, which is a huge mutual um, benefit. It offers them the rating, the A-plus rating, but probably more importantly, it offers them licenses across the world, which are going to be very expensive in time and money to, for, for companies to, to obtain on their own. That's what's made it attractive to startups in the past, and it's increasingly what's making it attractive to professional insurers and reinsurers today. I, I think that's absolutely right. I think if you look back over the past four or five years, um, we've seen Lloyd's companies, traditional Lloyd's companies, uh, re-domicile to Bermuda. And, and now, of course, the, the boot's on the other foot, in, in a sense, in that the companies are re-domiciling re from Bermuda back to Europe. Um, I think the thing to remember um, behind all that is actually there's a difference between where the company and the group is domiciled and where the business is done. And if you look down into, uh, into Lime Street and Leadenhall Street, there's a vast concentration of expertise and resource there. And you, know, you don't have to, to wander too far to see you know, huge companies that are, that are there um, writing business and, and doing business. You, you, know, you, you walk down there sort of 11, 12 o'clock uh, during the day in the morning, and you see reams of people carrying their briefcases, carrying their, their claims files. That's where the business is, is being done. Um, I think where where companies and capital is based is a different matter. And you know, there's, we know that the, the government in the UK is coming under huge pressure to, to look again at its, at its tax benefits. But I speak, you speak to, um, to huge um, numbers of, of international players, and they all re-emphasize all the time what a central um, place London has in their hearts and in their businesses. And I think the fact that we're seeing more companies queuing up to get into the Lloyd's market, and it, coming into London generally, shows us that it's remaining a center of, of expertise and resource. And you look at Bermuda, it's a tiny little island. It's a, you know, it's a wonderful place to do business. You know, nobody's, nobody's criticizing that. Even the people that are moving away from the island are um, adamant that it's a great, a great business center. But it's small. It doesn't have the capacity to, uh, to cater for huge numbers of, of people. And as, as the pressure on businesses to diversify, their, uh, their business lines and their business offerings comes. So they will increasingly, one imagines, be looking at new lines of business which are perhaps a little bit more resource intensive. And that is not the sort of business that's going to be written in Bermuda, perhaps not the sort of business that's going to be written in, uh, in Switzerland either. I think, I think that's absolutely the case. I think if you look at the makeup of the Lloyd's market now, it's in, there's a huge amount of, of US capital backing um, the underwriting in Lloyd's. I think that provides a, a certain uh, reassurance. I think also if you look at the reputation of the, uh, of the Lloyd's and London market for efficiency, it's improved uh, hugely. I think you know, any, any suggestions of the, of the troubles of the 1990s being um, uh, remaining are, are largely gone. I think as a Lloyd's underwriter, if you go to the United States, which provides 40% of Lloyd's business, let's not forget. Um, if you go over there as a Lloyd's underwriter, you're going to be much better received now than you were 
than you were 10 years ago. I think distribution has become a crucial element within the Lloyds market. I think if you, uh, if you look at where the business comes from and how the business comes into, into Lloyds, it's changed dramatically in the past couple of years. They've changed the, uh, the regulations on uh, Lloyds brokers, who can be a Lloyds broker, and uh, not just that, but actually increasingly the underwriting um, function wants to be on the ground in the markets where, where the business stems from. There's no longer that um, belief or there's no longer that expectation that business will just flow into Lloyds. Um, into Lloyds in London, they, uh, there's a sense that they have to go out and get that business. That's why we've seen um, businesses on the ground in, in Singapore. That's why we're seeing um, companies looking um, much more closely at, at the business at source. Um, it's also why we're seeing a, an increasing use of cover holders, um, people who actually know that business. And the cover holders have always been an important part of the Lloyds market, but increasingly that's coming under focus now. Um, the governance of cover holders is coming under focus now, and I think that will be an important um, area to keep an eye on over the next couple of, couple of months and years. Thank you.